What's up gamers? Welcome back to my channel. So today we actually have a requested video. I know, exciting. Uh, so Anya requested that I talk about the projects I did in my foundation year art school, to which I say, thanks for requesting it. So here we are talking about it. I'll put up on the screen all of the classes I took because it wasn't just foundation classes. And then uh, here are the foundation classes specifically. So in the fall semester, I had intro to drawing and digital imaging, drawing and painting. And then in the spring semester, I had 2D and 3D. So yeah, I don't know if I'm going to split this up into different videos or just make it one long video. I would make it one long video, but my internet acts like I'm trying to upload like war codes whenever I upload a long video. So we'll see. I also want to mention and put a tiny little disclaimer that this is very specific to the art school that I go to. I go to Maine College of Art. So please don't come for me saying, hey, hey Courtney, Courtney, I didn't do any of the stuff that you did. Why are you lying? I'm not. It's like the foundation program. You learn a lot of the same stuff from school to school, but the way that they actually teach it to you is different. So, sorry. <laughs> uh, but anyways, here's my 2D stuff. So, um, we did 20 projects throughout the semester, which if you consider it 16 weeks, it's, you know, a certain pace. Um, yeah, here we go. So this still kind of has stuff in it from my end of the year uh, foundation review. So like this stuff's from my character design class. Uh, but in all of these sheet protectors is the stuff I did in my 2D class. So first assignment, we had to cut out a bunch of black bars from silhouette paper, which is uh, matte black paper, if you don't know. And uh, we had to create eight compositions uh, four pairs of contrasting adjectives. So this one's order and this one's random. This one's airy, dense, tall, fat, rising, and falling. And then after we did this, we had to take six of these and crop them down into squares and make them more interesting compositions. So if we look at this one, it's the same as this, but just like at an angle. And this is from the order one, the falling one, the random one, the rising one, and the dense one. And then after this, we played with inverting the colors. So instead of cutting out the matte black paper and gluing it onto cardstock, we cut out the cardstock and glued it onto matte black paper. And we did these with four? Yes, we did these with four of the compositions. And then, <laughs> it gets more interesting after this, I promise. We had to take two of our black and white ones and translate them into color. We used this stuff, Colorade. It's like 314 sheets, I'll take one out, of uh, hand like screen printed matte uh, paper and we cut stuff out of it. <laughs> it smells really bad, I gotta tell you. The 2D room had a distinct smell by the end of the semester. So we played more with it like toward the end of the semester, but this is like our first dabbling in it. So you can see there, there, and then this, I for a second I thought it was just circles. I already tried to record this video, I'm recording it again, but I remembered it's supposed to be like Swiss cheese. So we were supposed to use the circles in a way that makes it look like the white is the foreground or like the positive space and the black is the negative space instead of the black being the positive because we cut all these circles out by hand so the first two are with a few circles so the, those two only had three and then more circles and more circles 
And then after that, we had to do implied circles. So we had to cut it out and make it look like there was black circles with white circles on top with more black circles on top. But in reality, all of this is just one layer of cut paper. And throughout all of this, it's really trying to teach us like how to make an interesting composition. Uh, these are all um, pieces of tracing paper for this next assignment, where it's not just bars or uh, circles, it's bars and circles. <laughs> so the first step of this assignment was like, doing just a couple of these and then we actually colored them in. These aren't cut paper, they're on tracing paper and we just colored them in. And then we had the opportunity to like make them more interesting so we could take some out and you know do some fun stuff with it. This assignment's really fun. I, I really enjoy the way that this one turned out. So we had a bunch of different tracings like we had to get photos and trace them all. So like, I'll show you these two specifically. So for this composition, it's this house with these legs on top of it like that. And then we traced it and we could basically add whatever fills we wanted to. So these two are two photos on top of each other. And then this one's three photos, three photos plus a scribble. So just kind of to add some like varying lines in there. And then these ones were four photos on top of each other. Then we did a little bit of text. It's kind of like a graphic design assignment almost. So we did a black and white, and then we did a color. And then here's where we start getting into just color. So I'll try to avoid the glare on that so you can maybe see it a little bit better. This is working with simultaneous contrast. So it's making one shade of gray look like two different ones and then two different shades of gray look like the same one. So because of the con, there we go. So because of the context, it makes it look like they're the same gray, but really they're not. And then we took that and applied it to like an actual composition with bars. And then we took those bars. I feel like Cody Co with all these bars up in here. <laughs> we made one in color where the colors match the uh, values here. So I'll edit it in post and see if the webcam's picking it up properly, but it should, when it's black and white, be these same colors. It works in real life. And then we did this one where, ooh, this, it's not gonna work on the webcam. That looks way more saturated than it is in real life. But uh, in real life, all of these are the same value. So when you look at it, like if you were to turn it black and white, it would just be like a blob. And then this one is the same composition, but it's uh, half of it is dull colors and half of it is bright colors. So it's just kind of like color theory stuff. After that, we did more simultaneous contrast, but this time with uh, colors instead of just black and white. So because these are all the same shades, these pairs, but because they're on different color backgrounds, they look like different colors. At least that's the goal. And then ugh, the camera makes it look worse than it actually is, but these are like, uh, you know, two different colors that look the same. They look the same in person, I promise. This makes the difference look really obvious, but they look similar. And then this one, we had to make a little, um, like a composition based on our initials. So mine are C, R, N. So there's like two C's, then an R right here and an N. And we had to use three different color palettes. So the first one is colors we like, accenting our first initial. And then the second one was colors we don't like, highlighting our second initial. And then the third one is a mix of the previous two color palettes, highlighting our third initial. And then this was a transparency exercise. I'd say it looks pretty similar to how it does in real life. Um, it's like picking the exact midpoint between colors so that 
when you know you put shapes together it looks like almost kind of like those bingo chips you'd use in elementary school when you lay them on top of each other they look transparent and like we kind of had some contention because the way that it traditionally goes is like you find the exact optical midpoint but if you do it like that like more like a multiply layer in photoshop it still does the job this is like the first crack that i took at the at this assignment but i was really bad at cutting out organic shapes so i was like fuck that <laughs> i had to redo it oh wow look at this me getting an a <laughs> um this was an actual assignment that built upon the transparency stuff here but actually using it in compositions so we got to choose the subject matter and i decided to do like transparent fabric so both kind of mesh and then the like uh vinyl-y like clear plastic and basically we had to show that we could do transparency <laughs> and then for our final we had to create three compositions that tell a story and we also had to like prove we could do certain stuff so like i think it was like transparency and implied shape and other stuff contrast to scale repetition maybe i don't know there was like certain stuff we had to meet but beyond that we could basically choose whatever narrative we wanted to so i decided to do a little vampire cowboy action so I, I was inspired by like a graphic novel sort of thing where like, you know, it's like an establishing shot and then closer and closer. And these are four inches by six inches. And like, I'll bring it up close so you can appreciate how much work went into cutting all this stuff. Okay, so hopefully you can kinda, hopefully you can see and appreciate how many like little tiny little paper cuts there are in order to make these <laughs> and we had to use this repositionable glue it sucks it's literally so bad but yeah that's everything i did in my 2d class wow with the power of editing we're on the computer now <laughs> So my 2D portfolio is really the only thing you'd benefit from seeing the physical copy of. Everything else pretty much I can just show you on the computer. So I'll talk briefly about my 3D design class and I'll insert pictures while I'm talking. I don't have like a fun Google Slides like I do for my other two classes but um, the first assignment, we made bars and arcs out of cardboard, and then we made sculptures based on contrasting adjectives, kind of like the first assignment from 2D. And then we got into groups of three and made those arcs that were originally like a foot or six inches long, it made them three or six feet long. <laughs> so we just made them bigger. And then there was another project with cardboard where we were focusing on texture, there was a project with wooden dowels where we were showing line and like kind of showing the concept of here to there and I liked the way that mine turned out for that. And then we did a stupid project where we used plastic and made an inflatable sculpture like when you put it against a fan it would inflate. And then for our final we carved a sculpture out of plaster. That's it. That's all we did in that class. I think it was a waste of time. I don't think anybody should take that class but at Mecca, it is required, so here we are. <laughs> so for my other foundation classes, I have stuff I can show you here. So for my drawing class, this is not everything that we did. This is like maybe a third, maybe a quarter of the actual like physical drawings we did. Uh, this is just kind of like best examples of stuff and like this is like what we passed in uh, for grades, so. This is the project that almost gave me a mental breakdown. <laughs> it was the first day. We had to take a piece of 18 by 24 newsprint, so we had to make horizontal and vertical lines. And as someone who has a pretty shaky hand, and especially with like charcoal, uh, th this literally almost gave me a mental breakdown. But we, nevertheless, she persisted. <laughs> this is best example of 
planes. So like basically my teacher just put pieces of paper down on the ground and it's like about sightseeing and like measuring the angles, like, you know, measuring that and that and making it look right. And then we took that concept and made it into boxes. And like, this is the best example of that. This is our first homework assignment. We basically just had to do a self-portrait. We could do it with whatever medium we want. You can tell it's mine because it has shitty yellow paper. <laughs> Literally everybody else had bright white drawing paper and I got mine from Strathmore and all of Strathmore's papers are off-white and I hate it so much. Uh, this is best example of like cylinders. So after we conquered the boxes, we started working with ellipses and making those look good. <laughs> for lack of, you know, better description. This was a really big piece of craft paper, like three feet tall and like two feet wide, probably. And like, it didn't really photograph well, but the actual drawing itself turned out pretty well, I have to say. This was our second homework assignment. We had to do like a simple still life, so, you know, boxes and cylinders, nothing too complex. And then this was the homework assignment directly after where we got to do more complex objects. Uh, for some reason I went with like a bathroom theme. Like this is a travel size Q-tip container. That's a uh, hand sanitizer, my ibuprofen, deodorant, and my lotion. So like, I don't know, a theme. These were some chairs. This was reductive drawing, so you put the charcoal down and then you kind of draw with the eraser instead of drawing with the charcoal. There's another one that's in like the second portfolio that looks way better than this one. And then the last one in here is uh, cross contour with pumpkins. So it's like, you know, all these small little lines. So this is the, this is the second portfolio. So this day in class, we did like three different still lives and we had to kind of emulate different artist styles. So I was Van Gogh, then John Singer Sargent, and then Ray Dawn. I don't know if I said that right. Here's the second reductive drawing in here. This one looks like way better than the other one in my opinion. Like all the forms just look more believable and it looks more finished. This was a homework assignment where we had to draw skeletons. I kind of half ass this one, can't lie to you. Uh, this is a day where we did like, you know, the fake uh, planar bust that's, like, you know, not a real person. Uh, I was trying to be more expressive with my mark making, but I think it just kind of looks messy in a picture. Uh, this was a planar head study that we did. I think this was either homework or like makeup for a day that I wasn't in class. And then we're about to get into some figure drawing, so if you don't want to see naked people, you know, go to this timestamp. But this, uh, the paper was on the ground and we were using brushes attached to broom poles with India ink. So like we had to kind of draw from the shoulder and we couldn't really be super precise with it. These were either 30 second or one minute drawings. And then I believe these were same deal, either 30 seconds or a minute. I don't exactly remember. And these were more traditional ones with charcoal. These were two minute. This was a 10 minute pose, I believe. And then this is longer. I don't remember exactly how long, maybe 30 minutes, I'm not sure. Uh, I really like the way that this one turned out. It's probably like my favorite figure drawing that I did in the class. I don't know, there's just something about the, I'm happy that I was able to accomplish like the perspective that this was because it was an angle I've never drawn someone at before. Uh, and then this back half is kind of like all the homework assignments we did. So this one is hands. This one we had to show like uh, the construction lines. This one is cross contour and then this one is like fully rendered. This was the last still life we did for a homework assignment. Uh, it looked better before it smudged. <laughs> like this is really smudgy. This assignment, we got a pine cone and a ballpoint pen and we had to draw, like we had to use as much of the ballpoint ink as possible on an 18 by 24 piece of paper. This took me like 10 hours <laughs> and I draw pretty quickly. Like it was such a time suck, but like it looks nice. And then these were studies of 
eyes and ears. Uh, these two and these two were both studies from other artist renditions. And then these three and these three were done from life. So like these are my own eyes and I think these are my own ears too. I like the way that the these eyes turned out, but I like the studies I did of the ears more than the ones in my actual ears. And then these were noses and lips. These two were done from uh, other artists' renditions. These ones were done from Life. I like the ones from Life way more. And that's it in here. I'll insert a picture right now of the final that I did. Uh, it was like two class periods. We could focus on whatever part of the model that we wanted to. I feel really bad for the person because it was a standing pose and like standing for six hours is pretty rough. Uh, obviously not all in one go, but you know, six cumulative hours. And then outside of my drawings, uh, here is all the stuff I did in my digital imaging class. I'll leave a link to the Tumblr page down below because my teacher made us make a Tumblr page. Um, and I go into a lot more detail in these captions about what each piece is, but I'll go over briefly what everything is here. Value scale stuff, using selection saves in Photoshop, favorite digital artist. Uh, this was like getting used to using brush tablets like brush pen tablets. Again, more getting used to using the pen tablets. I've used them for like five years, so it wasn't really like that hard for me to get used to them because it wasn't really getting used, it was just using. <laughs> uh, we did some still lives, so we got to choose what we wanted to do for this one. And then for this one, uh, my teacher gave us either a post-it note or a piece of crumpled up paper. And I had to crumple up a piece of paper blending exercise, blending exercise, uh, first self-portrait, second self-portrait, this is like a work in progress shot, this is the finished thing, that's a gif of the progress, and this one we had to do more context so like actually have a background. This one, uh, we took pictures in class that uh, had really funky lighting. This is like my avatar and pretty much everything because I'm really proud of it. And if you want to know how I look, that's that's me right there. <laughs> and then this one, we had to do an artist emulation and we also had to make a piece that has a narrative. So this one, I did a picture from my 21 Pilots concert and I the artist that I emulated was Dennis Sarazin. I don't know if I said that right. He's a really awesome painter though. And then for our final, we had to create um, a new album cover for an album of our choosing. I did I Like It When You Sleep by the 1975. That was, these were the thumbnails, work in progress, and the finished one. So yeah, that's about it. Um, if you want me to go into the other classes that I took, because I took more classes beyond these four foundation ones, um, let me know in the comments. If you have any other questions about the work I did, you know, ask away. I'm happy to, you know, answer any questions just because I feel like before I went into art school, I really had like no idea what to expect because I didn't do any sort of pre-college program or anything. So yeah, happy to help. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, uh, subscribe and turn on uh, my post notifications so you don't miss anything. Um, and yeah, see you guys next time. Bye!